We in the SpongeBob community are absolutely spoiled in so many regards. A handful of truly remarkable seasons with some of the best writing in all of cartoon history, then even more generally good seasons with more episodes always on the way. An amazing movie, a fairly good second one and a third on the way. We have musicals, songs, merchandise, the lot. We also have games and that's where we get spoiled the absolute most. There is literally no other cartoon, franchise or series that has ever had as many good games as Spongebob does. Little to mention a few great ones. And at the top of that pile are the Holy Trinity, the movie game, Lights Come Pants and Battle for Bikini Bottom. While others are very good, these three are the most beloved and respected. And of course, Battle for Bikini Bottom being the most, with the remake on the way proving its importance and relevance. But what if I said Battle for Bikini Bottom is not the best Spongebob game? In fact, neither is the movie game or Lights Come Pants or any that jump to mind. In fact, there is another. One that, through this video, you may also come to realise, by definition, is the best Spongebob game ever released. But first, we need to define some things to make this actually possible. So I have to quickly underline something here. I'm specifically talking about the best Spongebob game. In many ways, the game I will be talking about isn't on the same level mechanically as Battle for Bikini Bottom. For many, they would look at Battle for Bikini Bottom, see the large levels, the hundreds of collectibles, the memorable locations, and say, yeah, that is the best. But I need to clarify, yes, Battle for Bikini Bottom is a great game, but it is not the best SpongeBob game. So we have to understand what makes something a good SpongeBob game, and it breaks down into a few core points. Number one, it must be show accurate. This is where many Spongebob games fall apart, like Revenge of the Flying Dutchman, for instance. The game must feature the DNA and identity of Spongebob. Locations must be show accurate to a plausible degree, considering the world of Spongebob is always changing to suit the plot of the episode. So 100% accuracy isn't important, but the attempt must be made. Characters must be accurate. You have to feel like what they are saying and doing could happen in an episode. The game must strive for accuracy to be a good Spongebob game. And that accuracy doesn't even need to be in the visual representation of things, but more in the attitudes towards them. Number two, the dialogue. Spongebob is a show entirely built on dialogue and dialogue humor. For a game to be seen as a good Spongebob game, its dialogue needs to be up to those levels where someone could just listen to the audio and think it was from the show. Also, the game needs to have a great focus on dialogue as it is an integral part to the show it is representing. Number three, the gameplay must support the identity of the show. This might sound weird, but it's true. It's not going to feel right to see an extremely violent beat-em-up SpongeBob game. It won't match the tone or identity of the show. The gameplay needs to support the show. So those are the three main points. Now let me explain how Battle for Bikini Bottom, while not failing at these points in any way, shape or form, doesn't achieve them as well as the best game in the franchise's history. So point one, Battle for Bikini Bottom is extremely accurate to the show, from its easter eggs to characters featuring lesser represented ones like Bubble Buddy to its representation of areas, but where it fails is due to its genre. The fact of the matter is, this isn't what Jellyfish Fields looks like. Yes, the game and specifically the level is fantastic, but its representation of the show falls apart a little bit due to its chosen genre and level design. Now once again, a 3D platform where the level is completely flat wouldn't be fun, but the cost of creating a fun level was show accuracy. Nearly every level has at least some representation of this failing to a degree. Same for the open hub area. I won't pick on it too much for this because of PS2 hardware limitations and also who wants to run for five minutes between the Krusty Krab just to get to SpongeBob's house. But once again, the choices they made, while often good choices that improved the game, pushed the game further away from the identity of SpongeBob. Now for point two. The dialogue and jokes in this game are wonderful, honestly spot on writing and character interactions. The problem once again falls on the genre of the game. You might be working out what I'm going to talk about later. Dialogue is not as much of the focus of the game as it is in the show. The show is entirely built on character interactions. The game is not. 3D platformers simply aren't focused around dialogue, which as a game is perfectly fine, but as a SpongeBob game hurts it a little bit. Now for number three. This is kind of the big one. The gameplay of Battle for Bikini Bottom, however fun and enjoyable it is, does not support the identity of the show. Episodes of SpongeBob don't feature SpongeBob climbing up to the top of a mountain and fighting robots. 
The gameplay of Battle for Kingdom Bottom is great, but it is not show accurate to the identity, structure, and contents of a SpongeBob episode. A 3D platformer cannot fulfill those necessities. So for however great Battle for Bikini Bottom is, I mentioned I'm not saying this game is bad or anything like that, or that the genre is bad, or the level design is bad. All I'm saying is that it doesn't capture the full identity of what a SpongeBob game should be. It's not accurate enough. The levels often differ greatly from the locations in the show, the dialogue isn't the main focus, and a 3D platformer isn't a good representation of the minute-to-minute -minute action and conversations of a SpongeBob episode. Now you could also argue that these three factors aren't representative enough of what makes a great game. But as I've stated before, they are the three criteria that I think best represent what makes a great SpongeBob game. If we were just talking about games in general, then the fun factor, a sense of growth, and a challenge would also need to be added, but I'll talk about those later. So those are my reasonings behind why Battle for Bikini Bottom is not the best a SpongeBob game can be. It is moderately lacking in those three areas, but there is one that excels at all of them. What is it? Please don't click off the video. Please. It is SpongeBob SquarePants Employee of the Month. Released in 2002, published by THQ and developed by AWE Games, Employee of the Month is the best, most show accurate SpongeBob game ever released. And let me explain why. Employee of the Month is not the game that immediately jumps to mind when thinking of the best SpongeBob game. In fact, its following is so small in comparison to the other games that no one really thinks about it at all. But it is without a shadow of a doubt the best interpretation of SpongeBob in game form. Employee of the Month is a point and click adventure game. Mr. Krabs has given SpongeBob two tickets to Neptune's Paradise. The game follows the series of adventures and setbacks that make up the two hour experience. You will go from exploring Bikini Bottom, finding treasure at Goo Lagoon, talking to the weatherman in Rock Bottom who sends you to speak to a wizard, delving into Squidward's dreams, eating at a fancy restaurant and uh, subsequently getting chucked out of it. The story is exactly the type of absurdity yet restrained pacing that made the classic seasons of Spongebob so fantastic. If it wasn't for the rather aged looking 3D animation, it would be easily mistaken for the show in its story, pacing and comedy. The entire adventure feels like a really good TV special or something like that. Also, this game is just straight out hilarious. Sorry, I took your can. No problem. I hate you. <gasps> Who did this to you? A great pink beast. <gasps> he had eyes of fire and the belly of iron. <sighs> Sounds like someone I know. Well, part of it does anyway. Iron, I tell you! Iron! Time to put on your safety belts. Aye, aye, Captain! Okay, so the story, writing, and pacing is 100% perfect early SpongeBob. But what about the gameplay? You remember how I pointed out that while a 3D platformer can be very fun, and most people are content with that, if we actually look at what makes up a SpongeBob episode, a highly action-packed, exploration-based platformer really isn't the most obvious option when you look at the SpongeBob episodes that were releasing at that time. Classic SpongeBob, as I've stated, are 90% made up of characters standing in different rooms and talking, then walking somewhere else broken up by some physical comedy. But the bread and butter of old SpongeBob was always character on character conversations and comedy. That is why a text and conversation driven point and click adventure is the absolute closest you can possibly get to a SpongeBob episode in game form. It puts the focus back on comedy, because if the lines aren't funny, then you'll quickly lose interest. So the writing needs to be up to scratch, which frankly, it's more than up to scratch. The gameplay is even broken up into chapters, making it even similar to a handful of episodes due to its closed structure. What next makes it the best SpongeBob game is the world and interactability with the world. The world is the most show accurate recreation of these locations you will ever see. Even on art style perspective, they look completely perfect, like they've just been plucked from the show. Also the ability to interact with characters and the world keeps the gameplay fresh and enjoyable for the entire experience. Also, most people who've stuck around this channel for a while know how much I love good atmosphere in my games, and this one honestly takes the cake for the best audio design and atmospheric settings. 
Just enjoy rock bottom for a moment. I have to put a quarter in the slot. Yeah. Employee of the Month is the best Spongebob game. In every single way, it is the absolute closest to capturing the Spongebob identity, themes, structure, and pacing. The gameplay is the most similar to what actually happens within an episode, and the writing is on par with the early seasons. Battle for Beginning Bottom is a great game, but is in no way a perfect representation of the identity of Spongebob. But this game, nothing has ever or will ever come as close. This is the perfect, the absolute best Spongebob game. Thank you very much for watching. With the new uh, FTC and COPA rules breathing down our necks, it's more important now than ever to subscribe. Only 17% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you want to help me out and support this channel as we move through some tough times, please do. I'd also love to get this channel to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year as well. Anyway, thank you very so much for watching. Bye-bye. Where'd you get that sweet camera? I won first place in the annual Bikini Bottom Bikini Contest, and this was the prize. Patrick, you won a bikini contest? Well, I was the only male contestant, but the judges said I had the most unique figure.